Hello, in this video, I'm going to go through the first section of the 2007 PAT, the Oxford University Physics Assessment Test, or whatever it stands for. Uh, the physics section, the first part is they got an hour allowed for it, but they chop it into bits. You can use a calculator. G is 10 meters per second. I'm just going to do the first part, this section A that they're saying here, don't spend more than 15 minutes on. So we'll see what we can do in 15 minutes or so. Although I'm going to have a bit of waffling maybe around it, such as what I'm doing at the moment. So let's kick on then. How many questions have we got all in all doing this? Oh, nine questions. Right. So that might not be too bad. A cube of metal has sides of length X. The electrical resistance between opposite faces of the cube is proportional to something to do with X. So we've got the resistance is resistivity times length divided by area. That's just rain, a rearranging what you might be more familiar with of having the re resistivity as the subject. So the that will be resistivity times the length multiplied by x squared so we've got inversely proportional to x which is c question two an astronaut in the international space station experiences weightlessness because which reason now reason now of course weightlessness isn't weightlessness there's still it, it doesn't mean there's an absence of gravitational force. It means there's an absence of resistance to that gravitational force. I.e., when you know we're not getting any kind of normal reaction or something like that. There's not something that's stopping us. So we're we're not feeling that uh, yeah that counter effect. So what's happening here? Is she weightless because she's outside the Earth's gravitational field? No. Is the attractive force of the moon going to cancel out that of the Earth? Well, I mean, it does occasionally, but not in general, and certainly not when they're in the International Space Station, when they're a lot closer to the Earth and to the moon. Is it because she's moving? Well, no. So is it because she's accelerating at the same rate as the space station? Well, yes, and that's because you're... So that's why you're not going to get that reaction force, because if... She's on the spaceship and everything is moving with the same acceleration. You're not getting this upwards force, which is what we're feeling as weight. So, yeah, slightly awkward term weightlessness. See my other video on that. Uh, and not everyone, of course, uses this, uh, this defines weight in exactly the same way. And that's what I go on about in this other video. You know, maybe we want uh, an operational rather than theoretical definition. But that is for another time. Question three. A nine volt battery is connected across a 100 ohm resistor. Given that the charge on an electron is that, what is the number of electrons passing through the resistor every second? So we've got V equals I times R. So I is V over R, which is nine over 100. So that is coulombs per second. We want electrons per second. So we need to divide this by the coulombs. So we're going to be doing, well, let's make that, well, we're dividing by the 1.6 times 10 to the 16. I won't put it there because it means something different. So electrons per second is going to be, let's make that a 90 on the top and a 16 on the bottom because we then got something to divide. I know we can use the calculator, but it's quite nice not to. So we've nicked um, tens top and bottom. So that's going to leave us with still 10 to the 17 uh, on that. So we're already looking like we're going to get A because it's the only thing that's got 10 to the 17 on it. And yeah, five lots of 16 is um, 80. So yeah, we got A. So that's three. Question four, a drop slide in a fairground has a very steep initial slope, which gradually curves into a more gentle slope. If a child drops down the slide, what happens to his speed V and the magnitude of the acceleration A? So V will continue, will be increasing all the time because you're, you're still doing your GPE to kinetic energy. So V is always going to be increasing. A is going to be decreasing because we're getting more of a reaction force from the slide so we need to have v increases 
and AE decreases, which is C. This is looking good so far. A spring that obeys Hooke's law has a spring constant of K. Two such springs are linked to form a spring of twice the length. What is the spring constant of this new longer spring? Right, so for the first case, we've got the sum F is KX for the extension. That's our Hooke's law statement for that. For the two spring combo, we've got for the same force and a different force constant, we've got that we're going to get twice the extension because each spring will extend by the amount X. So equating these and dividing everything, we've got that our new spring constant is going to be half of the original spring constant, which is A. On to six, two resistors R1 and R2 in parallel with potential difference of V. Total power dissipated in the circuit. Right, so we've got Vs and Rs. So power is V squared over R. And we know that if we've got two resistors in parallel, one over R total is one over R plus one over, oh, getting ahead of myself with my Rs, one over R1 plus one over R2. So we got V, oh, it's A. It's just written straight out like that. So um, don't even need to look at the others. It's just dropped straight in. So question seven, we got PET scanners frequently operate using this radioactive active isotope fluorine 18. It's got a half-life of two hours. Um, I don't know why I'm putting that down. Um, T half, we haven't got onto the decay constant yet. The isotope is incorporated into a drug, half of which is excreted by the body every two hours. How long will it take before the quantity of radioactive drug in the body halves? OK, so we've got um, our, well, let's see how things are, are dis decaying there for if we've got our decay constant is going to be log two over the half life. So that is log two over two. Let's keep it in hours. Which is equal to log of the square root of two, so two and a half. Then we can put that into our A over A0 is e to the minus lambda t. So 1 over um, e to the t log 2.5. So we can make the t the power and get rid of the e and the log. So I'll just do that instead. So t log 2 to the half. So if we put that t up to be log 2 to the t over 2, then the e and the log bit just will cancel out. So we're getting 1 over, um, no, the e's gone, 2 to the t over 2. OK, so that's good. Now, we want that to be um, a half. Well, actually, um, yeah, we could, oh, actually, we've got double decay. Yeah, we've got double decay for it to go, drop down. So we need, if two things are operating in the same way, we need A over A zero to be the square root of a half. So when we multiply them together, we get a half. So that's what we need, because we're getting this twice. So yeah, we need to put that together. That's what we need for this. So we've got um, two to the minus a half has to be equal to 2 to the minus t over 2. So t must be equal to 1, which is b, keeping everything in hours. Yeah, that's the key thing, because we've got that double decay. We've got half-life of two hours, and we've got this excretion, uh, excretion half-life of two hours as well. So yeah, we're not just looking for this to drop to a half, because we need to do it twice. And of course, 1 over root 2 squared is a half. So yeah, that all makes sense, and it leaves us with an hour. Right. Where are we? Uh, question eight. A pressure cooker has an escape valve that is essentially a 125 gram weight resting on a circular hole of one millimeter. What pressure will lift the weight off of the hole? So pressure is force over area. So the force has to be the same as the weight. So 0.125 G, putting it into kilograms. And then if we put this into meters, so we need to have a pi r squared. So a pi times, so that's 0 0.001 
squared, which is equal to um, 0.125 g, oh, g is 10, isn't it? Um, anyway, divided by pi, that is going to be 10 to the 6 that we need to multiply by. So we've got a 10 to the 7 all in all. Um, well, let's make that move it up twice. 12.5 times 10 to the 5 over pi. So it's going to be around about 4 times 10 to the 5. How many have we got here with 5? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. C. And the last question. Car of mass 1,500 kilograms towing a trailer of mass thousand kilograms okay steady speed driver decides to overtake another car and accelerates at four meters per second squared frictional force on the trailer is 2500 what is the force on the tow bar okay well we don't care about the car we've got some t there so we can say we're just doing F equals MA. So T minus 2500 is equal to the mass of the trailer multiplied by 4. So T has got to be equal to 6500 newtons, which is A. So, yeah, not bad. Didn't take that much longer than, you know, 15 minutes seems quite reasonable for doing those. It, the, the one was a that was a little bit fiddly was number seven here with this double decay but there you go so i'll do the next part of the paper in the next video